How's it going everybody? I hope you're all having a wonderful day. In this week's build, I am making a miter spline jig for the table saw. Let's get started. In woodworking, we often find ourselves in situations when we're making boxes, drawers, or picture frames like the one you see here, where two joining surfaces are end grains. Unfortunately, wood glue alone does not provide the strongest joint with end grain to end grain joinery. So a joint like this here needs to be reinforced one way or another. One of the easiest way of reinforcing a joint like this is by using miter splines. Essentially what it is is, we cut a small channel in here with the table saw blade and then we wedge a perfectly fitted piece of wood in there with wood glue. What that adds is face grain to face grain surface contact and that's what provides the strength that is otherwise not present on this end grain to end grain joinery. So that's the purpose of a miter spline. However, cutting a miter spline on a piece of you know right angle like this is not very easy. So the best way to do that is by creating a jig. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I built a miter spline jig. But before I go into the build process, let me show you what the finished product looks like first. All right, so this is my take on a table saw miter spline jig. What you have here is four support pieces on each end that were essentially triangles. We've got smaller, you know, 45, 45, 90 triangle in here bigger ones on the back, and these two create essentially 90 degree V-shaped support for the middle section. And the middle section is screwed down onto all of the support pieces, and then there's screws from the bottom coming up to the support pieces as well, giving us plenty of strength. Um, the fence in the back here is taller than the fence to the front, and the reason I did that is because I want to be able to see the cutting action a little bit better, and I personally don't feel that we need support on both ends to the same length, so this kind of works out better for me visually. We did add a T-track in here that allows us to use stop blocks or work holding options and you can get pretty creative with it uh, but as far as the stop block goes i have a super super simple one in here on the t-track and the purpose of this is to allow us to get repeatable cuts so if you've got a box and you want to put in my spline jigs you know you make all your four cuts and then if you're trying to make a cut at another position you unscrew this move it forward and then make those cuts once more you will notice that there is a small little uh, opening in here and that's to provide clearance for my table saw blade in the event that I make a stupid tall cut and uh, trip my saw stop breaker feature and of course you know this is being guided by a miter bar below um, all right guys I think that's pretty much it let me show you how I built this but before we move forward with the actual build I wanted to take a quick moment of your time to just express my gratitude I've been doing YouTube for about two and a half months I think now and I think I have about 100 subscribers and I just wanted to say uh, thank you to every single one of you for trusting me uh, with the subscription slot on your page and for uh, liking my content enough to subscribe and also for all of the comments, complimentary comments as well as the feedbacks too. Um, I greatly appreciate it because I'm a, I'm a brand new channel and I'm trying to improve and I'm trying to make better content uh, for, for all, of, uh, all of you guys watching. So thank you so much for the kind words, for the constructive criticisms, for everything, all of it. I just, I love this community so far and I'm having a great time. I hope you uh, continue to follow along and come watch uh, what I have to make and um, hopefully it's something that you enjoy watching. So thank you so much for all of your support. I greatly appreciate it. I, I, I just I don't have a good way to express my gratitude but I just want to say thank you. Um, anyway so with that being said let's get on with the build. So for today's jig I am going to be challenging myself a little bit by using this 24 by 30 inch uh, three-quarter Baltic birch plywood. Um, one of the reasons for it is because <laughs> it's the only piece of plywood that I have in this thickness in the shop right now because uh, I keep waiting for plywood prices to drop and it just keeps going up and I haven't really purchased much of plywood uh, in, in a little bit of time now. But anyways, uh, I think there should be plenty of material in here for us to do this and if you happen to have you know a rockler or woodcraft nearby, this is a very common size Baltic birch plywood that you may find in those shops. So uh, if you're going to make a jig like this, I want to make sure that you're able to make that jig using a piece that is uh, locally sourceable for you. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rip this at uh, nine inches wide, and this is the long way, so 30 inches is this way. Um, so we're gonna get the nine inches out first. We have the blade tilted to 45 degrees, and we're going to take that long strip and make a miter cut. 
And next we're going to take this oversized piece and cut them into two even parts. So with those two pieces cut at 45, they come together at our 90, and that's going to be what's going to support all of our Midas spline cutting function. But in order to add additional functionality to this jig, I'm going to insert, or I'm going to cut a dado in here to insert a T-track. Now turning our attention to the base, I am cutting off a 14 by 15 piece from our original cutoff. Okay, so off camera, I took this miter bar and I cut it to size on a metal cutting saw. Uh, you don't have to use metal miter bars, by the way. Uh, you can obviously use wood. So I made sure that these are, you know, nicely fitted so there's no rocking. And in order for us to get this in here, I'm going to put a couple of washers. And these washers are going to raise it up ever so slightly. It's not quite, you know, visible, but I can feel it. It's just a little bit above the height of the cast iron and that's perfect. And next I'm going to add some double sided tape in here, like so, doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to move the fence over to where I want, you know, our base to be. And then we kind of carefully look at the miter. We're using the fence, by the way, as a way to square it up to the blade. So the assumption is that the fence should be perfectly parallel to the blade. And so if we use the fence, and push it down like so. That should be pretty good. Move it out of the way. Pull this out. There we go. And that gives us the position for the screws. All right, there we go. No slop whatsoever. Moves in nice and free. That's perfect. Okay, so, so far we have our slider, right? We have the miter bar in here. And then we also made our 45 degree cuts. We cut a dado for the T-track. And what we need to do is we need to join these 45 degrees. And once they're jointed, we need to find a way to fix this down in here. So the first order of business is this jointing of the two 45s. And um, when they meet, it's going to be 90 degrees, but you know, oftentimes when you're putting a piece of work uh, that you're trying to cut a spline onto, they're not the most perfect thing in the world. So they could be slightly off of 90 or the, uh, the corner might be a little too sharp. And so in order for, to accommodate that little corner, I'm just going to sand a little bit of this to provide a tiny bit of clearance for any imperfections on you know, the piece that we're trying to cut the slot into. And in order to make this two piece stick together, I'm going to use super glue just because it's much quicker. So it's super glue on one side, activator on the other, and I am going to use a gauge, slightly nerve wracking. Hold it here for a second. That should be good. The good thing about this is we are really not relying on the strength of this miter joint that we just created. As you know, the whole purpose of this is to not rely on the strength of miter joints. This glue up is just so that we can kind of manipulate this without them falling apart. Okay, so we're now going to take the one of the last bit of scrap that we have. I'm going to make a seven inch cut and out of the seven by 14 some change, we should be able to make four, you know, uh, 45 degree triangles. So I have a 45 degree triangle in here that is a reasonably precision instrument and I'm going to use that as a way to make my first 45 degree cut. What I've done is I've uh, used this as a reference in here, uh, of course this is a 90 degree and then uh, you know I kind of made this line that I want to cut. If you don't have a triangle like this you can um, measure out exactly the same length from this 90 degree corner and then strike a line and then do your absolute best to cut, you know, right on that particular line. I have to say, cutting these was a little bit harder than I expected. Um, as long as you have a really good way of making sure that your cuts are good, um, I think that's a good thing. So in here, I'm pretty close to 45. It's off by probably just a hair. And you know what? 
I'm going to live with it. All right, so we have the platform in the bottom and then we've got our 45 degree triangles. And looking at this, I think um, there are a couple of things that I'm gonna change. One is this hangs over a little too much, but frankly, me standing behind it, this feels way too tall for my height. So I'm going to uh, trim this down a little bit on this way. And that also means that we're going to use a smaller triangle. All right, so I made a bunch of these little triangles and they fit in here pretty well. Um, it does kind of show, you can see a little bit of that wiggle room. It's not quite this much, but there's definitely, um, this is not a perfect 90 in here. So uh, once we put everything down and you know screw it down, I think it's going to straighten out just fine. Even if it's not, it's probably going to be okay. All right, so it's time to fasten this down. I'm going to move this out of the way for now and work with what I have here. Um, I know these triangles are pretty accurate and pretty close to each other in size. So I'm going to rely on this to give me some of one end of the reference. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly make a little line to know how far they go on both ends. And then I'm going to move these out of the way for a second and I'm going to put some glue down. Um, so I'm going to use CA glue here just because it's much quicker. And then I'm going to use the activator on the bottom side here. I'm going to spray away from my cast iron and then we're going to bring this down. Okay, so the activator has been sprayed. Hold it down nice and tight. And I am really putting this down mostly for alignment purpose than anything else. I'm going to reinforce these for sure with some screws. Got the activator in. Sneak this sucker down and drop it in nicely. There we go, push it in, push it in, hold. We're just doing a quick little pre-drill and countersink so we can drive a few screws to keep this a little bit more permanent. Okay, so uh, we added the support pieces in the middle that you see here. We sunk a bunch of screws on this side, as well as a bunch of screws from the underside coming up onto them. So everything is fixed in, nice and tight. Nothing is going to move whatsoever. And then just quickly, I wanna make sure that everything looks square. You know, I could probably get a feeler gauge in there, but it, honestly, I think it'll be probably two, three thousandths of an inch. So I'm not gonna even bother. That's plenty enough for this type of a project. Okay, so with the T-Tracks fastened, um, you know, we can talk about the reason why I added these T-Tracks in the first place. You know, T-Tracks are very versatile because you can, uh, you know, attach a whole bunch of things to it. And in our case, the two primary things that I'm interested in is a hold down clamp that can hold the workpiece as we're cutting into the workpiece. But more importantly, a stop block reference edge. Uh, so <laughs> this is probably the world's simplest stop block, uh, but it's effective. So it's basically a piece of wood that's really, really square. Um, and it's really square because I want to trust the squareness of this, right? And because we know all of these surfaces are flat, square, etc., cetera, um, basically what we do is we take a T-nut, we put this in here, and you'll know that there's a little bit of wiggle room in here, and that's on purpose because I want to make sure that there's enough wiggle room so that I can push this down against this uh, piece of wood in here. And then we put our little nut, all right, so again, push it down, tighten it up, and now this becomes a reference edge. If you need to reposition it, you just unscrew a little bit, move it around, again, make sure you push it down, tighten it up, and then you've got another reference edge to work with. All right, so at this point, I would say this is pretty much done. Um, one thing that we haven't done yet is we haven't taken a full pass through the table saw. So let's break this in and put a pass through the table saw. The other thing that I wanted to mention is I didn't make a through cut like all the way through in here um, and I probably will eventually. This end is kind of scary, right? So if you push your hands in here and you've got your finger a little too close to the blade, I could potentially injure myself or uh, trip my breaker. Uh, and generally speaking, you know, I think the best thing to do is to put a block in here like so. And then that protects the blade. It also kind of serves as a visual anchor that, hey, dummy, 
there's a blade in here, don't put your hand in here. And that'll probably work really well. I haven't quite decided if I want to include this block or not um, as part of my risk tolerance, um, but I think, you know, to be safe, you should definitely include this. All right, enough talk. Let's actually put this thing to work. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the blade is raised at the appropriate height such that the blade, the top of the blade is not going to pass this little corner in here. I mean, you can do that, but you shouldn't because then it's kind of a pain in the butt to clean up. And the blade actually appears to be in pretty good height for this particular operation. The second thing is uh, I want my miter splines to be perfectly in the middle and the picture frame is uh, 1.5 inches wide. So I want this to be closer to 0.75 inches. We can then bring our picture frame in here and then I'm going to actually bring our T-Track clamp. There we go. We just want to make sure that it's pretty well aligned to the fence and the rest is pretty straightforward. We turn on the table saw. And this is what the resulting cut looks like. Um, I am using a combination blade, so it's not going to leave the flattest uh, bottom in here. And if you're really interested in doing that, you would use a flat top grind blade. I personally don't mind the tiniest little imperfection in there. What you would then do is you would take a piece of wood like this that is just a tiny bit less thick than the slot you just created. We would add some wood glue and then you would insert the miter spline in here. And then you would let the wood glue dry. You can cut this off and then sand everything to finish and you have a perfectly strong joint in a location that otherwise did not have a strong joint. And that's the whole point of a miter spline. Well, that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If it did, please give me a thumbs up below and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not a subscriber already. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you and your support, and I will see you on the next one.